Making animated short films is easy. I make them all the time in between my full-time jobs because I love filmmaking and having a project to make life not so mundane. But you know, starting something new, making your very first animated film is obviously very daunting and very scary. It's easier not to start because you don't know how to start. And that's where I come in. I'm gonna show you the process of my most recent short film, the fourth installment of my Little Space State series, to kind of guide you how to kind of start your own animated film, as well as sprinkling in some tips here and there for you and you too can make your own short film in less than two weeks if you're not too ambitious. So let's take a look at Space Date 4. It's short, it's simple, it's cute, and I made it in two weeks. So first things first, you need to start with an idea. That means chicken scratch on a page, some thumbnails maybe. When making your first story, aim for around 30 seconds. You don't want to be too ambitious and animating takes like a super long time. So within 30 seconds, you can tell a story with the beginning, middle, and end. Something has to happen that launches your protagonist into a type of conflict and it has to get resolved. In this phase, you'd really sketch out loose ideas from your film with character ideas, character sketches, a couple thumbnails of your compositions, and some of your background designs. Time to storyboard. I'm starting really loosely sketching out some of the storyboards. I'm using the Adobe Suite for my project, so I'm using Adobe Animate to start drawing the concept in storyboards. I start by establishing the scene. The characters are fixing a ship. The protagonist, who's the boy, accidentally cuts the ship in half. His conflict is trying to fix it before the girl sees it. In the end, the girl notices it, and he says the punchline and brushes it off. In the end, the ship is breaking off in space. It's a very simple story with a beginning, middle, and end, and it can be told in one scene in a really simple way. Tip number one, plan out your background in this stage so it's really clear where the characters will be in the background, and that the story will work in the way that you set up your background. Focus on composition and framing. It's easy to change the composition in this phase, but it's a lot harder to fix later. I end up flipping this whole thing horizontally because it feels like there's more weight on the left side, but since we read left to right, it feels like unbalanced. So I want my weight to be on the right side of the frame. Tip number two, really focus on acting in this stage. You want the expressions of your characters to be really clear. There's a lot of comedy in my film, especially in the boys' expressions. So I want Want to make sure that I nail it in this stage. Next step, animatic. So an animatic is basically your flat storyboards but timed with music and sound. It's basically your entire film but it looks ugly. So I throw all of my storyboards into Adobe Premiere. I find some sound effects on YouTube. It really helps sell the film at this stage when it looks this ugly. <laughs> I fix some timing issues, I chop it around a little bit to try to really get a sense of what I want the timing to be for the final film. And I suggest really taking your time with the timing here because this is the foundation of your film. If the timing's not right, the tone won't be right, the punchline won't be good, and the story might fall flat. So at the end of the stage, you should have a really messy version of what you want your final film to look like. Bzz, bzz. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Concept art. So I've made three Space Date films before, so I already know what these characters are going to look like. But if you haven't made three films of these characters, then it's time to sketch out your characters. Like I said, definitely sketch your characters out in the idea phase, so when you storyboard, you have the drawings to base your character on. You also want to create a turnaround of your characters. Three angles should be fine if your idea is simple. You don't want to skip turns because it'll be so much harder to try to figure out your character's side view when you're animating. Always do turnarounds. Make sure to keep your volumes even throughout the drawings. Also, you want to have a colored version of your character so you can just color pick when you're doing your coloring in your film. Make sure to color your character over your background color to understand the context in which your character exists to make sure the contrast works. Don't forget to choose the colors for the inside of the mouth and the underneath of the shoe if we see it. If there's a difficult or unique pose in your storyboards, draw out that special pose in this phase so you don't have to worry about it later. Everything that needs to be designed 
gets designed in this phase. My girl character is in this pose for most of the film, so I draw her to make sure she looks right. I also draw her profile in pose because she only changes the pose once, so I don't have to make a full turn for her because she's not moving. You really want to be efficient in this phase and you want to draw what's going to be on the final scene. Because my boy character has a lot of different poses, a turn is necessary, but because the girl doesn't have any poses other than these two special poses, I'm only gonna draw her in those special poses. I also have props in the film, so I design them right next to my character to have the size comparison. Next, recording audio. If you have dialogue, you gotta record that before you start animating because you have to lip sync to your final audio. I recorded in my makeshift sound studio with many options and a lot of takes, and then I put it through Adobe Podcast to make it sound a lot more clear and professional because I don't know anything about sound design or how to balance audio. And then I choose my best takes, and then I update my animatic with all the final dialogue. Oh, come on, we don't need that half anyway. Rough background. You should probably have your background roughed out at this point. Rough animation. Time to start animating over your storyboards. So go through your entire animatic and start by drawing important key poses, making sure you're staying on model. It might be tempting to start at the beginning and just animate straight ahead, but trust me, key to key is the way to go, especially if you're not a professional. Focus on placing your character in the right spots in the background, especially where the characters can interact with the environment in a realistic way. Like, I don't want the boy to be way too far from the girl that he can't give her the tools that she needs, but he also has to be far enough that he can have enough space to act, right? Tip number one, don't be afraid to break your model if the pose calls for it. The boy's arms are too short to lift over his head, but the scene calls for it, so I make it work. As long as it's not on screen for way too long and the rest of my poses are on model, I don't make a big fuss over it. Tip number two, don't forget to animate in arcs. Humans don't move from A to B in a straight line. We move organically in curves and arcs, so make sure all your movements are in arcs. So once you have have all your major poses planned out, then you can start in-betweening and making your poses connect. Create easing by favoring one pose when you connect your two poses. I'm no professional animator, but these are the techniques that get me by. Clean background. At this stage, you should have your background finished and insert it so everything works out together. My partner Antonio was in charge of backgrounds, so I just had to trust him to figure that out for me. Next step, clean animation. I make sure my roughs are pretty tight so I don't have to figure anything out when I clean. So this phase is pretty straightforward. Tip number one, make sure your line weight is what you want at the beginning of this phase because you will not be able to change it. Clean your first pose, zoom out, see if it works in the scene. Tip number two, don't be afraid to copy and paste pieces of the character to make sure you know their limbs are consistent in style and size. I copy and pasted the boy's head in every frame so I wouldn't have to redraw it. I just redrew the face inside the head. And I always refer back to my character turn to make sure that the design is tight tight and always the same. In your rough stage, you know, things don't have to be so perfect and you could be a little loose with your character model. Then this phase, this is when you gotta up your game and you really gotta keep it nice and tight. Color animation. It's time to color the most tedious but easiest part of the process. If you come this far, then you're almost past the finish line, except not really, there's still a lot to go. But the hardest part is out of the way, background. So Antonio puts all the backgrounds together after I'm done with animation because he loves a challenge apparently. Good thing that it was planned well from the start because starting a background after clean animation is done is the dumbest idea you can think of. If something doesn't line up properly with the characters, you have to change your animation. You have to move that around to make it line up if the character is interacting with the background, or even if they're standing in front of something that creates a tangent. You know, you'd have to move that character out of the way. And he also finishes creating the spaceship before it gets cut in half and then after it gets cut in half. Compositing. My favorite part of the animation process, well, after design, is putting the whole thing together in After Effects. Compositing is the stage where you really see the film come together. This is the part where you can add effects and shadows and lights and final touches like grain, noise, glow. You can add camera movements, camera shakes, etc. This is also the part where I put the credits together with some simple effects to really bring it together. Don't skimp out on credits. I find a good credit sequence will pull your film together and really connect it from the beginning to the end. You want your credits to be just as exciting as the film, I always say. I also make sure that when I'm compositing, I don't add way too much that takes away from the film. If the film calls for it and it needs a lot of flashy effects, then this is a fun place to put it in. But because my story is so simple and focusing on just these two characters right here, I don't go overboard and I really make the characters acting shine here. And then it's time to render out the export. Sound design. 
Now that all the visuals are done, it's time to create your final sound effects. So a lot of my sound effects from YouTube are already in the file. I'm kind of just moving them around, making sure in the right spots and adding a couple more sound effects that I think is necessary. I'm no sound expert, so I send the files to my incredible musician friend, Christy, to balance out all the music and sound effects and dialogue. So it sounds just the way we like it. And those are all the steps to making your very own animated short. Obviously I kind of missed a couple details here and there, but it's the, the basic idea to not overwhelm you and actually get you excited. It's really not that bad. The hardest part is actually starting, right? And also probably having all the programs that you need. If you don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on the Adobe Suite, then there's probably alternatives that you could find online with quick Google search, I can find a few. So give them a shot. Let me know which ones are actually good. I'm pretty confident that there must be free alternatives for animation for beginners. I used TV Paint back in college and it was pretty affordable and I made some pretty animation. So remember when making your animation to start with a really simple idea that has a beginning, middle, and end. Really stick to one or two locations, keep it around 30 seconds long, and don't get tunnel vision. It's really easy to narrowly focus on details, but you have to look at the bigger picture. With these tips in mind, you are set to create a great short animated film. And if you do create a short film, please comment the title down below so I can go take a look have a peek at what you guys are creating. Quick shout out to my own Patreon. I have lots of cool exclusive resources there. I give critiques. I also post lots of tutorials on drawing characters if that's something that you need a little bit of help on. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.